Opening statements beginning in Fort Worth, Texas today in the trial for Aaron Dean, the white former police officer charged with the 2019 murder of a Tatiana Jefferson. Her death sparked national protest after Dean shot her through a window while responding to a call about an open front door. At the time, the National Black Police Association said the killings of black citizens by white officers had reached critical mass. 14 jurors have been selected for this trial, none of whom are black. Jefferson's nephew is set to be the first witness in this trial. He was just eight years old and had been up playing video games with her when he saw her killed that night. For more, let's bring in ABC News legal contributor, New York City homicide public defender and host at Law and Crime Network, Brian Buckmeyer. So, Brian, the trial began this morning after years of delays. Why the setbacks and how strong of a case do you think prosecutors have here? Yeah, so Kira, it's been some time since this October of 2019 uh, shooting death of uh, Tatiana Jefferson. And part of the delays was the fact that the defense pushed back the case asking for more time to review uh, the evidence, which is kind of commonplace for many cases like this, but also the fact that the judge, the former judge of this case, uh, was actually booted out of the case for alleged bias towards the defense. And that had to, of course, go up to an appellate court for a decision and then come back. And so removing a judge and more time to review evidence caused this delay, among other things. In terms of the strength of the case and listening to the prosecution's opening statement, they're laser focused, and no pun intended, on this gun in a Tatiana of Jefferson's hand. Now, it's not illegal for her to have a legal gun in her in the home and actually the circumstances makes a lot of sense because the police did not announce themselves however the defense is zeroing in on that saying that there's a laser spotter on that gun and that laser is what the defendant Aaron Dean saw and then reacted to but the prosecution is saying you didn't say gun when when you shot you didn't say gun when you went inside the home and you and your partner were investigating so the actions at the time of the shooting and after that don't support this defense's argument that aaron dean saw a threat that he needed to shoot at so no black jurors why and what do you think the impact of that will be so from our understanding, there were 200 potential jurors that came in uh, to hear this case. And as it got whittled down through questioning, there was only one African-American juror in a pool of about 50 or 60. So it's not necessarily the selecting by the prosecutor or the defense. It's really the pool itself. Now, in a case like this, it could have an impact because the question that many people ask when it comes to race or social economic standing, who will the jury sympathize with? Who will they put them themselves in the in the shoes of so to speak in viewing this case however it may not have as large of an impact because for the most part the argument is that Aaron Dean only saw a silhouette they didn't know if it was a black person um, a white person or or any other kind of race and so I'm not sure how much of an impact but it may still have some impact on the case so this officer Aaron Dean has pleaded not guilty to murder what do we know about his defense in this case and what type of sentence could he actually face Brian so far his defense is self-defense and it's not quite clear how that's going to work out for self-defense in Texas you are allowed to use force deadly or or non-deadly against someone using unlawful force now Tatiana Jefferson was not using unlawful force we actually heard for the first time in court today uh, through the star witness so to speak Zion who took the stand the then eight-year-old now 11 year old testifying that Tatiana said that she thought perhaps outside there was a raccoon when she heard steering uh, stirring sorry in the backyard and so that's why she pulled out the gun and kind of left it by her side he actually demonstrated that for the jury and in terms of sentencing there's a wide range if former officer Aaron Dean is found guilty it's five to 99 years so this might not be a case of guilt or innocence it might be more of a case about if he is found guilty how much jail time he does and so what more do we know about this judge who's pres pr presiding over this case we know he's already issued a gag order yeah, so we know that he issued a gag order, so not much has been heard throughout this case. And he also, earlier today, has denied a change of venue. That's something that the defense has been arguing a lot, even up until the final moments of an opening statement. And it seems like this judge is kind of no-nonsense, wants this case to go forward. One thing that was shocking to me is that days before opening statements, earlier uh, last week, the lead defense attorney passed away. And that's part of the reason why today is only 
only a half day to allow for everyone mm. to go to the funeral. So this judge seems to be wanting to push this case along forward and get a resolution. It seems that he believes that this three-year delay is far too much, and he wants some form of justice for either party or both. All right, Brian, we will follow it all. Thanks so much, Brian. My pleasure. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.